My story to me is one of reflection. A reflection on how far I've come and what has helped me get through difficult times. It's a reflection on how passions in your life can benefit yourself more than just finding enjoyment in it. My story is also one of vulnerability. It's a story I've never shared with anyone before and feeling vulnerable is a feeling I try to avoid the most. My story to me acts as a stepping stone to allowing myself to be vulnerable and to find strength in that in sharing this story. Life of a perfect student in a crumbling home. Academic validation. They say when one comes to rely on their academics to feel recognized and appreciated. It does feel good, especially when school takes up so much of my time. For me, maintaining my academics was something that I know will leave me feeling secure, with the feeling that I know what I'm doing and that this will support me in my succession. It made me feel good to do well in school, be the one people could come to if they needed help, or to lend my nicely written notes to someone. I'm always more than happy to be of support. Maintaining academics was also my way to escape from not so nice things. When other parts of my life weren't going well, at least my grades were. It was one of the good constants in my life, something I have control over. It felt even better since it comes out of my dedication and hard work. All of the late nights finishing a presentation, clicking submit at an ungodly hour, or having tired wrists from writing out a review sheet. The attention I paid to every detail came back to me with a beautiful feeling of relief and accomplishment that I did that. I don't remember when the word family became an uncomfortable topic. It's not a desirable thing to ponder about, what it was like before things became the way they are now. When I ponder about it and anything related to what's happening, I'll sit with it for a long time in my thoughts, replaying it repeatedly. It got to a point that my older sister would have to tell me, don't think too much, you'll get sad. I would say to myself, it's okay, you're doing well in school. At least this part of my life is going great, and this was enough for me. But when things happening at home started to leak into affecting school, School started to feel tedious and getting through an assignment would take much longer than usual. The house was filled with tension. At times, I would be acting as a messenger between members in the house or constantly switching between spaces so I wouldn't have to sit in the uncomfortable, hoping for some time when strained tension ceased to exist. I started to find more and more solace in being home alone. I became quieter in the house, only answering with one word or a head nod spending more time in my room and acting as if I made a noise that would only increase the arguing and that was the last thing I wanted to do. Doing so, I wasn't another factor to worry about in the house. The downside of how I acted was that I was perceived as not interested nor caring about what went on in the house, when really what I was doing was because I cared. While balancing schoolwork and the stress of being at home, I found peace in playing and listening to music. Like for many others, music was an outlet to get away from all the stress, even for a moment. Music, along with dance, were the brighter yellow moments of my life. There were two things I looked forward to the most. Performing arts is a significant aspect of life for me, taking up all of my school lunch hours, weekends at times, and hours after school. I would often be performing in four or more performances in a concert's program. I love the people I've met through taking part in these ensembles and being able to share the same passion and love for the arts. At home, my ears would hurt after having earbuds in for hours on end. I'd rather be listening to a song than be left in silence with a chance of hearing yelling. It was like in the movies, when there would be music that accompanies a moment. I guess you could say, listening to music was my life like a movie moment. I would indulge in playing the piano, which was rewarding and stress-relieving to put my emotion elsewhere. Plus, it was nice to learn a new song from a movie or a trending pop song on the radio from time to time for fun. It was pleasing to have something that sounded beautiful come out of my fingertips as I pressed each key. This was my main outlet for taking a break from the stress, school-wise and home-wise. It's both beautiful and tragic that many of us find comfort in forms of art, using it to express ourselves and as an escape. It's ironic that we find beauty through pain. Performing arts have been a prominent part of my life since I was five, starting with traditional Thai, Laotian, and Chinese dance, partaking in folklorama, then later in my childhood, adding musical theater, choir, and ballet, and through school, being introduced to various other dance styles. 
It wasn't until much later in life, though, that they became more than just something I liked to do and became something that provided me comfort. Never yelling or throwing a hand, but always a smile, a feeling of a hug, fulfillment, and fun. My love for performing arts would not be what it is now if not for my older sister. Having watched her through her high school years dancing, singing, and acting showed me how powerful, beautiful, and even times how magical the arts could be. Watching years of performances has made me, I would like to think, a well-rounded person. Exposing me to countless forms of music, dance, and the significance of people coming together to collaborate and create. The lessons I've learned from performing arts are something I want to continue carrying with me as I move forward in my life. Academics and performing arts is a combination that I've balanced for years now, and it's quite interesting to do so. Experiencing feelings of success and happiness from both, whether that be having done well on a final project or my cheeks hurting from smiling so much after a performance went well. School and the arts were my main focuses. Through these parts of my life, I've made amazing friends and met exceptional teachers and mentors in the arts and education. Life goes on, and so will I, navigating these ups and downs, surrounding myself with people I love dearly, and finding outlets to be creative and to stay in the light.